Now, this April marks 30 years since the Chernobyl nuclear disaster when a catastrophic explosion at a nuclear power plant in Ukraine contaminated vast swathes of the surrounding area. But Ukraine wasn't even the worst hit. Belarus suffered around 70% of the nuclear fallout. And some of the radiation victims are the focus of a project by Polish photojournalist Jadwiga Bronta, who was born just two weeks before the catastrophe. She is with me now in the studio. Jadwiga, Good uh, evening. welcome Hi. to you. Thank Just tell you. us, you have done this as part of an MA in photojournalism, yes, this yes, project. Yes. What took you to Belarus and why these stories? Uh, so mainly it's, it's because um, during the incident, I was just a week old. Poland at that time was a satellite state of USSR. Uh, so for me, being, be, being born at that time, I was called the Chernobyl child, but there was no meaning behind that. Later on in my life, through another amazing photojournalist, Paul Fusco, I've learned what it's really uh, aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster. And because of the 30 years coming, and it's very close to my heart, mm -hmm. I thought that, yes, exactly, I thought that I would be a right person to tell the story. Tell us what you found there in these institutions yes. and what they were like. Huh. Uh, so, uh, basically, the the, the, the biggest pro uh, problem is that they were not just Chernobyl victims. In general, uh, disabled people, it's a massive taboo topic in Belarus. So they are not just Chernobyl victims, but any kind of children with any kind of disabilities, whether it's mental disabilities, uh, kids being born with the Down syndrome, autistic, with any kind of deformities, they are all housed in the same institutions. And, and the level of care there, you say even sometimes uh, the cleaners are involved, that it just yes. simply isn't the support and they're, and they're living in rooms where there are many of them at the Yes, same that's time. true. I mean like it is, uh, for us it's very shocking, but what I've learned from other NGOs, it's, you know, they are doing so much and they're trying to help, however it is still a very difficult situation and uh, uh, it is upsetting when you walk in and what you see. Yeah, we go. we're going to um, talk through maybe a couple of, of some of the pictures. Let's just show you, um, I think we can see one of the girls that you photographed. And, and you, you, we're just trying to bring you... I mean, just talk about some of the people we saw there. Just, just okay, how, so how my they interacted with you. What did they make of you coming there with your camera? So that was, for me, was very difficult because it was very first time when I was working with uh, that Sveta, that amazing girl. Uh, she was so lovely and... Uh, Besides her face being deformed, she's such a bright, intelligent little girl, and she's so confident. She was so happy for me taking pictures. She was always around, and, and the confidence, like, very often it's, you know, you've got those beautiful girls, and they are shy to smile, and she was all there, and it's like, she saw my phone. She was like, let's take some selfies. So, uh, I mean, like, she, she's just beautiful. And another person was uh, Leosha. The boy I think we can the see him now, the boy by the red curse. Yes, in this yes, incredible exactly. picture. Uh, let's just bring you that now. Yeah, there he is. Uh, with him, it's an amazing story again, because for me as a photographer, I was afraid that I would walk in with this big flash, and you know, I didn't want to cause any anxieties. And, uh, and for me, actually, light in my camera, the flash gun, was the language between us. He was walking around and observing me for a little while. And then out, out of the blue, he started posing. He, was, he would sit down and he would wait for me to come and take a picture of him. And uh, he didn't care about the picture. He didn't care about me. For him, the flash, the, the light, that, that was something so, what made him happy. And uh, that was win-win for me at that time. What are the prospects for these, these people's lives from here forward? Uh, I mean, like, it's all in the hands of the government, but uh, I have to again underline that there is a, a lot of NGOs from UK and from Ireland that they are trying their best, and they are little changes, but you know what, those kids go 70p a day to survive, so there should be more help, I believe, to, you know, to help NGOs so they could help them to have a better future, because they can.